Hello, welcome to the Animation Breakfast Club. Hello. 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 Wait, can you hear me? Hello. Oh, that's not going. Hello. 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 You think they can hear me? Oh. Nice. 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 Are you here? Uh. Yeah. I think so. There you are. I'm just writing some congratulations to Sarah Harper oh, in yeah. our chat with her. There were two raids. What? Whoa. One. Thank you. Kuba. Stop knocking things off, buddy. Is Kuma is Kuma being a pain? Oh no. Here I am. Ha ha! Oh no, my mouth isn't working either. Oh well. Guess you guys will just have to imagine. Ray the Yeen and Code of the Gamer raided. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. That's so cool of you guys. Welcome. Thank you for raiding and how the heck were your streams? I am telepathic. I'm speaking directly into your minds. Into your minds! Normally the mouths move, but maybe it's a maybe it's a microphone thing. Maybe it's a microphone thing. As long as you can hear us, that's the important thing. Yeah. Ah, Ray the Yeen, thank you so much. Also, Yeen is one of my favorite animals. Yeah, India's got a whole Welcome. watercolor illustration page of ye Yeens. Yeens are the best! I follow the Twitter daily Yeen account. It's really? very important to my well being. Koda says, Dream went well, working on an animation of Mr. Saturn from Earthbound. Oh. Ooh. I don't know who that is. I do. Ha! <laughs> Ray the Yeen just followed you for your, your Yeen appreciation. <laughs> Thanks very much! Yeen's the best, man. They're so cute. I love them. You like? Do you like their laugh? I do. Yeah, I think it's cool. They have really cool vocalizations. I love the the way that their body, like, it's almost like their front legs feel longer than their back legs, and they have this kind of sloped back, and it's just like such a cool. I'm, I there's no other animal like a Yeen. Yeen Appreciation Day. Keen appreciation day. So I was up until 3 a.m. How are you doing? Uh, I think I was also up pretty late, but I fell asleep to video essays. So I'm, I'm okay. I would genuinely like to know if you would fall asleep sooner or if you didn't have videos on. I probably would. But the thing is, it keeps my brain occupied. Oh, because if your brain isn't occupied, it tries to eat you. <laughs> If my brain isn't occupied, sometimes I get thoughts that keep me awake and they're oh. very unpleasant. So I'd rather be kept awake by something that's kind of fun to watch than be kept awake by my brain yelling things oh. at me. Oh. <gasps> Hinker! Hinker! Just Your prince to... arrived! Like... Yay! Sorry, Only... do I please do read it. I just wanted to let you know that Game Grumps Variations prints arrived safely. Now I just need a frame and thank you for the friends you sent with them. Yeah! I'm so happy it arrived. I can't believe it took this long. It took this... Okay, so... Did it just arrive? Wait, did it... Did it... No. Did it just arrive? Did it just arrive now? Because that's like we over that, a month. We sent that months ago. Yeah. What the heck? Holy shit. Oh my gosh. Postage? Postage is bonkers wild. right now. I can't believe that. That was like, we said that like six weeks ago or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. A long, long time. When you, when you ordered, like, yeah, we sent it like a long time ago. <laughs> Pilkey says the best uh, uh, best advice they've ever they've heard is never pay attention to your thoughts about your life after 9 p.m. <laughs> wow, bracelet. that's pretty good. Yay! 
Mish, I'm, uh, yeah. What was I saying? What were you saying? I don't know what I was saying. I don't know. I don't know. What was I saying? Remind me. I don't know. That's why we have Twitch chat now, so we don't have to remember. Congratulations can... to Sarah Harper. Oh, yeah. Say it. Say it. You. Uh, congratulations to Sarah Harper, who has been promoted to creative director of the 2D branch of Flying Bark in terms of original new content and stuff. That's incredible. That's so cool. That's so, so awesome. incredible. I can think of no one who is like a cooler person to take that position than Sarah. Sarah is going to absolutely rock it. Flying Bark is probably the most exciting cool. 2D animation studio. Yes. around right now absolutely i think they're one of the bastions of of 2d animation like the absolute best in the world heck yeah i'm excited to see what what sarah's gonna do what's she gonna do what's she gonna do what's she gonna do <laughs> what's she gonna do <laughs> with <laughs> all that <laughs> power <laughs> Do you need help? Uh, no, I'm good. I'm fine. I just need to run a little faster. I just had to... Help! Do you help. want help? I can help. help you. No, I'm fine. Help! <laughs> help! I could just move the chair out of the Help! Oh. Don't come near me. Help! Don't come near you. Help. <laughs> Ah! You're fine. I'm fine. You're fine. I'm just gonna live here. Huh. 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 Oh! Helped. I, I didn't need your help. I didn't need anyone's help. I was fine. <laughs> Are we there yet? It says, don't come near me. Help. My life motto. <laughs> Tidy time. So what you up to today, Doug? Um I'll probably open up the girl in the glim background. Yeah yeah. Pinkerpink says, yeah, congratulations to Sarah Ra 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 Hope Harper for being super awesome. Yes. Oh if you're new here, um we're a bunch of goobers who make stuff. And uh, more recently, we just had a book published, a graphic novel called The Girl in the Glim, um, which is available online and in stores. M more available online, honestly. Although, I saw someone um, ha go into a store, I, someone showed that they went into a store and got one recently, which was like, whoa! Yeah, actually physically in a store, which is something we've yet to see, but... And if you happen to be near uh, Comics Experience in San Francisco, sorry, if you happen to be near San Francisco, Comics Experience has a whole bunch of copies of Glim there, if you are interested. They sure do. Hey, Myths and Legend, thank you so much for the raid. Hello, welcome. Welcome. So how's chat? How are you guys doing? Tell me, tell me about how your, the beginning of your week's been. Camera doesn't. I'm. I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna make a new camera for sitting on the couch. Couch cam. A couch cam. Yeah. That sounds fun. Um. <clears throat> One I, last time. I feel like we could have more cameras for specific places around the room. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Pilky said I did some design yesterday. It was not awful. Great job. Heck yes. Martina went to Ikea yesterday, so you're tired now. What'd you go to Ikea for? Doesn't matter what you, what Martina went to Ikea for. Ikea absorbed them and made it whatever Ikea wanted <laughs> Martina to do. Wow. <laughs> do you got something against Ikea there, Doig? No, but if you go with the intent of one thing... Yeah, you do you end do not up... leave <laughs> having possibly fulfilled that intent anyway, but you'll... Basically, we went to go get a part for a desk 
Mm -hmm. And, and then we came week, away with... <laughs> and then one week later, we spent, like, a lot of money on furniture. Yeah. We were like, oh, well, we saw so many things and we should deck our apartment out, so... Is there something in the meatballs? <laughs> the meatballs are really good. I'm just putting it out there. Maybe there's... Something in the meatballs. There's something in the meatballs. Something in the meatballs. Um... Kurzik says, I finished Outer Wilds last weekend, and now I'm team get dog stuff to play Ow. Oh, amazing! Oh, Heck yes! to play Outer Wilds. I get it. <laughs> to play Ow. To play ah. Ow. <laughs> Onster says, I realized I'm burnt out. Onster! No! I mean, I feel bad that you're burnt out, but also I feel happy you've realized it. So I'm like trapped between two emotions right now. I hope you're doing okay. Take a break, Onster. I wonder if I can re rebiggin. Onster, take a. Oh, I can. Good. Onster, take a break from commissions and stuff for a couple of weeks. Just take a break. You need a break. Watch some fun stuff. And play some games. Onster, no. <laughs> Let's see, Wolfgang says, it's setting a debut date, making promo stuff. It's time, let's go! Oh, let's go! You've worked so super hard on everything that you've been working on, and oh, I'm really pleased. Yeah, let what? us know when your promo date is, so we can make sure that we're, like, shouting about it. Are you are you on Twitch for it? Or are you on elsewhere? Let us know. Mad School Design says, doing great, almost better after being sick for ages, and it feels so good. That's awesome. Dragon Lady says, I have no drive right now. Hinka Pink, I had the best week beginning. I was so productive yesterday. I did all the annoying paperwork stuff. So madly proud of myself. That's awesome. That paperwork stuff is annoying, but it needs to get done. And you did it. Onsta says, me realizing I haven't got on a proper rest since February. Onsta! Onsta! You need that rest. I got pretty burned out when I was on that last deadline for Mystic Crystal. Yeah. And I didn't realize that I had um, kind of until I think you and uh, our flatmate at the time were just like, are you okay? And I was like, what do you mean? And you're like, you don't, you don't seem okay. And I was like, oh, like when you, when you're in it, I don't think it's immediately obvious. Who said that? Uh, Declan, he mm. was like, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, there was definitely a point. There's been a couple of points where it's like, you've seemed like you're super low, but whenever I ask you about it, you're like, no, I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like people from the outside can tell more easily. Um, I think it always takes the actual artists themselves a little bit to realise what's happening to them. Yeah, because it wasn't, it wasn't like, negative sad emotions it was just kind of a little bit of a numbness i think just for the for the like the, the the pressure of trying to get stuff done i feel like it's almost like a nihilism that takes over you a little bit yeah it's tough it can be tough i think we had that interview um with comics experience on sunday which is available on YouTube if you want to go get it, grab it. Oh yeah, everyone! Everyone go and look at it! Um, and, uh, and make it super popular so that <gasps> they, they want to have us <gasps> on again. Yeah. Let's show them the power of of the animation breakfast club. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I said something like, failure can knock you over, but no one really talks about how um, success can kind of hold you down there once you've fallen over. like. The expectations you put on yourself after you've already made something that people kind of liked. I don't know. I I don't really hear pe people talking about that so much. Maybe I just don't listen to successful people. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, that's um, real. That's real. Like um, doing what people perceive as a good job at something and then feeling the pressure of the next time you make something, you have to do at least as good as that. And it's really hard because art's subjective. So making something that people like at least as much as that can be can be tricky and difficult because it's like, well, this is a different project. It's not got the same spirit. I can't make it have the same spirit. 
all I can do is do the best job I can. Yeah, and like, you know, when you've worked on something and then you're super close up to it, and then afterwards you get a little bit of distance, and when you're super close up, you're like, oh, all the mistakes, oh, I hate this, oh, what, are, what am I doing? And then yeah. you get a little bit of distance, and you look back and you're like, oh, this was actually okay. Yeah, it was. You couldn't see the mistakes as much as I thought you could. Yeah, but then. Like, for, for instance, on Glim, working on the next pages, I kind of looked at the first part of the book and I was like, man, this is really cool. And I was, I, in my head, I was like, it's kind of a little bit iconic of, of what Glim is. I, how, do I, how do I do that again? How do you top this? Like, oh, I rem like Maybe with pages. hot fudge sauce? <laughs> like, how do I do it? Um, and the <gasps> similar experience I had... <gasps> And, and burning out I think is like working on like a third music video for for um like Dan and and the others it's like the, well this one has to be at least as good as or if not better yeah if like not better than the, the last two mm -hmm. um <laughs> oh, my head man Eleven Light says, is the Animata Discord up? Any chance I could get an invite? I want to give this a go. Yeah, absolutely. It is. We can give you a we can give you an invite. Uh we can we can pop the link to you, no problem. Yeah. Oh, and uh, there was a gifted sub from Pilkey to Space Pirate Fenra. Ooh, thank thank you. you so much. Pilkey Pilkey says a gift for the launch. And Space Pirate Fenra says, Thanks so much for the gift sub. Wait, so I might have missed the train there. Is Space Pirate Fenrir the... You'll be changing your name to another identity. Gotcha. Awesome. So this will be the account that you're launching from. Gotcha. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, let us know when you have the launch date. Got it. Got it up here. Onster says, I've been at home chilling. I'm working, but chilling more than I have before. Onster, you gotta do some straight chilling. You, you gotta. You can't, you can't also sneak in that work on the side. I mean, I know that there are some commitments where you have to do the work. Where you, like, absolutely have to. But see if you can carve out the space for yourself to just have two weeks of, like, nothingness. Just, like, streaming if you fancy it. Wandering around, you know, Japan and and hanging out and playing games. That's what you need. Yeah, Kurzek yeah, says, oh, people like this thing I did. I better make the next thing just as good or better. Yep, exactly. Alistair says, also making sure you're consistent in things that you do. Like, maybe you don't cut yourself enough slack and you're like, well, I'm afraid again juggling other stuff, but I gotta keep barreling through. And you just keep adding more hoops to jump through. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm very much a person who's like, ah, uh, screw the hoops. <laughs> just, yeah. Just do one thing. It's, it's like you take on a bunch of stuff and then you think you're the problem. It's like, I should be able to get this done faster slash better and you blame you blame yourself and figure that the problem is that you're just not working hard enough to get all this stuff done i just thought about the hoops as sonic rings mm -hmm. and like you you thrive <laughs> it's almost like you 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 thrive on going through the hoops and getting like getting things done and i don't i i thrive on <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I thrive on. I'm still figuring out. You do that thrive part. going through the hoops. You do. You're what? just scared of going I'm through the hoops. I'm super scared. <laughs> That's all. Um, but it's almost like you take damage, like Sonic, if you drop a ring. Drop a ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't. But maybe I do. Maybe I do take the psychological hit. But it's so. That's what happens. That's what happens. I yeah. Get numb. Luckily, like, burnout is easy to tell when it comes to me. At this point, I know the signs well enough. Like, when I'm not excited to create things anymore, there's something wrong. <laughs> yes. There's something deeply wrong. Um, and I know that I've conquered burnout when I start to get that excitement back to, like, want to do stuff again and want to, to get my own stuff going. 
when I get that that fire again to be like, oh man, I I really want to draw this or do this. You got that fire in that belly. Mm -hmm. You got it now. Yes. Oh yes. Yes. But I was burnt out after my last project for for a little bit. Yeah. Like there was a little while there where it was like very hard to make myself do anything because I had this kind of uh, nihilistic like, oh man, what's the point? I remember the grumps talking about when when they were working super hard and then they finally took a break when they took the break that was when like every all the emotional stuff came rushing in yes. and i was like well that's a cool anecdote and now i'm like oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, i basically turned down working for a company because i had that feeling i was like nope I don't want that immediately again. Mm-hmm. No thanks. Thanks very much, but no thank you. And that was probably a good call, Doig, because imagine if you'd said yes. Yeah. You might still be working, you know, on whichever project that would have been. I never would have made uh, this little bubbly <laughs> ex- um, escape from reality. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so that was heavy. I mean, I don't think it really is. Like, I think it's it's a part of being an artist. And I think maybe people should talk about it a little bit more. Um, just because I think it's something that every artist is probably going to experience at some point. And, you know, making it, making it out to be something that we shouldn't talk about just means that when people experience it for the first time, it's kind of hard to know what to do about it. It's still hard to know what to do about it now, even though I've been through it a couple of times. I just have to have faith that it's going to end. Like, that the yeah. feeling of burnout will go away. Like, you haven't fundamentally at your core changed and now no longer enjoy art. Like, it's you're just like, your brain is dealing with stuff. you got to trust the fact that you're the type of person who will want to make something. You know when your phone is running out of power... Mm-hmm. And it has that little pop-up. I don't know if this happens on other, anything other than an iPhone. But it goes, hey, your battery running low. What do you want to do? Low power mode. Low power mode or cancel or whatever. And it's just like, well, low power mode. I think that's I think that's kind of the equivalent of like when you realize that you're, there's not much in the tank. And it's like... It's your warning sign. Yeah, it's uh, it's like preserve or perish in the wind I know he says this is all I write about my first book is all about artist burnout I know he do you have a link to it do you want to drop it in chat I watched a video um, which was a analysis of Starlight Brigade that I happened upon because someone mentioned it in a comment um, because people are talking about what the themes of Starlight Brigade is Ooh. Um, which I thought was super cool and it's a 40 minute video and it's the first video on their channel and Starlight Brigade in, like inspired them to push through to make the video so it's fairly meta that's awesome um, and it had me tearing up but do you want to link it? E- yes let me find it let me find it um Did I say what it was called? Um, no, you didn't. Um, so I think it... Here we are. Um, it's called... The, the, the analysis is called Starlight Brigade, the Anthem of the Artist. I'm going to watch it. That sounds amazing. I don't think I've seen that one. It's it's only got about 5,000 views. Um, and, I, you know, I hope, I hope more people see it. Uh, um, Benevolent Knight says, as someone with clinical depress- depression and floating anxiety, a fun mix. I know the power of just being aware that you're in it. Yeah, like knowing what's happening to you, I think is is half the battle. Um, yeah. And Dragon Lady says, I miss being younger and wanting to do everything and doing it. Now I have no idea what the fuck that was and I why I bothered to begin with. I can't figure out where it went. I think um, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, it'll here. still be inside you. You just need to, to give yourself like a break in the space to be creative. I think it's a lot about just easing the pressure off yourself. Because when pressure has a stranglehold on you, it can be so hard to think of anything creative. Yeah. So that's part of the reason why breaks help. 
fear is just like loosening that grip. Um, fear, fear it does a lot to. Um, I remember I, here's a quote from a dog from like angsty teenage years. Must have been like eighteen or nineteen when I wrote this, but it was um, <clears throat> fear is the noose by which we hang our dreams. Mm -hmm. I was trying. I was. I was a bit. I hear that's very. <laughs> I was that's, a bit morose. That's poetic, dork. Yeah, but it's, I. Th I think fear is the thing that holds us back. Fear of rejection. Yeah. Fear of like un not being judgment. accepted. Judgment. Fear of judgment. Fear, fear of that will let ourselves down. Yeah, and they're all real things. They can happen. Yeah. But the point is, um, you don't always have complete control over whether they happen or not. And if you let that control you, then you never make anything. So you might as well just make stuff anyway. And sometimes it'll be a failure and sometimes it won't. Yeah. There's um, no one that's made stuff who, where their stuff has been good every single time, all the time. Do you notice that a lot of creators, um, when you see their work, you kind of place them somewhere on like, on the mount, the, um, the 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 acclaim mountain, you place them somewhere like high up. Aspiration Mountain. Yeah, Aspiration Mountain, and then you watch an interview with them, and they are as <laughs> still as insecure as ever. Yeah, they're like, I don't know what I'm doing. I hate lo a lot of my work. Does does that make you feel better, or does that make you feel, um, wor I guess worse is the alternative. It makes better. me feel better. Yeah, like they're, they're still handling their shit um, as much as ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I it taught me that like that feeling, while troublesome discom and, and discomfortable, doesn't really go away. It, it told me that I wasn't alone, uh, that everyone feels that way. And if someone who feels that way can make work that good, then so can I. Mm. Um, we got a chromo from Alex Perth who says, Early tonight I watched an interesting video by a person on the autism spectrum about how Donnie seems very autism coded in Rise and a good representation no less. Oh, I clicked on that. I've seen that video too. I clicked on that thumbnail because <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a frame from the animation that that's a, boarded. Yeah, that's one of the, the frames uh, from my board thumbnail. So I was like, <gasps> <laughs> but then also it was a really good video. You made Donnie cry. I did. But you made him cry in a way that was very good. I had a very specific thing in mind that I wanted to go for with him. I think he did really well. Thanks. I think, I think also, Ayanoki has dropped the link to the comic. So just a heads up to anyone who was interested in reading Ayanoki's comic about burnout. That's in chat now. Sorry, Mike, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go I was ahead. just saying, I think it connected with a lot of people. Yeah. Like, I'm the kind of person who has emotions but doesn't realize it, and then they kind of hit me from left field. Mm-hmm. Um, don't know what that says about me or what that means, but that's that's how that's how my existence goes. Yeah. Uh, I think that's, like, kind of the scary thing about burnout is that often it doesn't hit you until you're, like, a month or two into it. Like, yeah. it can take a while to realize what's happening to you. That's why hydration... Looking after yourself, taking care of yourself matters. Mm hmm Like, you, you should 100% go hard and, like, work hard and do your ideas and get excited about what you're doing, but at the point at which you're not excited to create anymore, you gotta take, you gotta take a step back and recharge your fuel tank. Watch a bunch of stuff that makes you, made you want to create in the first place. Um, ben, we're not burned out, we're just talking about it a little bit, because it's yeah, an important part of... Yeah, we've been uh, burned out. Yeah. And now we're talking about it a little bit. I've started painting stuff again. Yeah. Um, That's a good sign. Yeah, I painted a sky whale. Mm hmm. In, in the sky. Yeah. Do you want to show it? No. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was pretty. Did you think it was pretty? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Did you really? Yeah. Really, really? No, I'm lying to you. How dare you? <laughs> of course I did. Cool. It's a digital painting. Um, but yeah, doing things in your free time is a good sign that you're like climbing out of the burnout hole, you know? Yeah, having 
I haven't painted in a long time. Mostly because I've been like making and tinkering and modeling and everything, but like, I think I got scared. So I'm trying to get myself out of that. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> Shadow Ziggy says that no was funnier than expected. <laughs> well, I, okay, so if the thing is, is that I gave advice on the, um, on the comics interview, which I'm going to keep bringing up because shilling is an important part of being an artist and letting people know what you've It was done. a fun interview. However, I, I gave the advice of like, if you wanted to start making comics or anything really, then you got to have that inner fire that if you, if you're alone and you're making them and there's no one to show, do you still want to make them? And the paintings I'm doing right now are for me. So when you're like, do you want to show people? I'm like, no, I want to see if I'll keep painting them just for me. Because I need to know that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's... That's interesting. That was why, no. Like, that, that, that painting is for me. And I told you about it. Like an ass. Like an ass? No, yeah. You, yeah, no, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with being like, hey, do you like this? Yeah. I did I did a little drawing. You did a little drawing? Yeah. Well, I'm going to show it to you. Hold on. <laughs> the exact opposite of me. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Um, yeah, that, that comics interview was really nice. Uh, they, they interview a whole bunch of people and I think they, they run a club. Um, there's two, there's two club memberships with the store. There's one for like, um, adult books and there's one for like kids books. And every month, if you're a member, they send you out what they deem as like the, the a comic book of the month. And a lot of times they get... Oh, that's cool. I like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like the hat. Is that purposefully like pointing in direction type thing? Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. That's character design, baby. It's on my iPad, so I can't show you guys, unfortunately. But I was doing a character design last night for so some idea pitching I want to do and uh, I I think I finally hit on something I like with one of the characters who I've been struggling with for a long time I, I really like it I like the, the um, skin tone thank you um, yeah 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 it's nice um, Izzy says what I would really like to do when I get the money is to finally draw some short story comics deeply inspired by Metal Slug's art style. Yeah, Metal Slug looks amazing! Oh, do it. That's awesome. Um, I was just going to finish off the thought I had. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I came in and interrupted. Um, yeah, so they have two memberships. And, and if you're part of it, then you get uh, a, co a copy of the book. And I think you also get, like, um, little extras. So um, sometimes books and stuff have, like, signed boilerplates or, like, other illustrations and stuff with them. Uh, we, we, we didn't <laughs> organize to get that. <laughs> Don't help me. <laughs> Don't come near me. Help. <laughs> um, yes. This is great. But oh. they've, they've, they've super, they've really, it's really cool. And uh, I think they're doing a good job of supporting uh, creators. Uh, they, they buy a bunch of books and they, they, they send those out. Um, to to the members each month and so uh i i wish them all the best i think they've got like i think he was saying he's done 200 interviews which That's is so many interviews crazy to me like uh, as far as i could see it's a fairly unknown i mean it's got like a thousand subscribers on there but it's fairly like you know niche and unknown and i think i want to help them <laughs> get more known if i can even if even if it's just a little what are you laughing at? This book. Because I was laughing because you dabbed half of your sentence. Oh, I, that was <laughs> that was weeb. <laughs> Thanks to weeb. Yeah, I, I think it's it's an awesome club. 
like you get to join the monthly comics club and you get a, a monthly comic and then that monthly comic there's an interview done with the uh you know the artist or creator or writer of the comic it's like such a, such a cool idea and such a nice combo not only do you get something but then the interview is directly relevant to the the book you get yeah it's really cool yeah that's super cool i think the i think they interviewed neil gaiman once so whoa i've made it <laughs> that's amazing i can't believe we're in the same place as neil gaiman we were once before in the, in the same bookstore. <laughs> Completely different time, but same place. That was the year I manifested the universe to, to bend to my will. Oh yeah, that was the year that you wrote a list of things you wanted to do that year, and one of them was meet Neil Gaiman. Yeah. And then, like, two weeks later, it was like, oh, he's coming to your town <laughs> to do a signing. I willed it. I willed it into the universe, you can't <laughs> tell me otherwise. <laughs> Yeah, then we met him and he was nice. It was crazy. He did so many signings and then like the, the organizers, like the books, I was with Waterstones, then the bookstore people, the, the, the workers there, they brought out this bucket filled with ice and water for him. And he just like rolled up his sleeve and just put his entire arm in the bucket to like i think recuperate from all of the, the all signing. the signing poor neil i was like he was, holy shit he was super nice the entire time though like despite the fact that he must have been in pain from signing so many books he was never anything but like polite and kind and nice to every single person that bookstore had a cafe um i think it was like a costa or a starbucks or something um, and the, that was a really nice bookstore. It was in Dundee in Scotland and you would go upstairs But there would be like a balcony banister thing that you could look down in the bookstore So me and Swifty just went up to the cafe and stared down at him. And we just about, watched him For about 40 minutes until he was like done. Yeah, and then we went down to be like hey Yeah Because hey. we thought like the line was super long and we're like well We'll just chill out in the cafe until the line's shorter and then we'll go I was around the time that I won a little, not won, I got picked for a little thing that he was doing called um, Calendar of Tales. And my Skywells painting got uh, shortlisted. Yeah, I think you, you mentioned that, right? Yeah, and he to was him. like, I liked it. I His like, Masterclass is one of your favorites. Mine too. Mine too. Thanks for reminding me that I have a Masterclass subscription. I should go on there and, and listen to a few more lectures. Class of Masters. Yeah. I liked, uh, I've seen a couple of the early episodes of his and I liked how he said that as as storytellers and writers, we um, tell truth with lies. Yes, that was good. That was the same quote I was going to use. Ah. Ah. He does not creep you all. Yeah, just us both just like up on the balcony, just staring down at him for 40 minutes. Hey, Neil. Neil. <laughs> hey, Neil. How's it going? I think Neil Gaiman... Mm -hmm. Or Gaiman. Mm -hmm. Oh, Gaiman. I oh. don't know how to say his name. <laughs> Gaiman. Gaiman. Um, He's like I, a Digimon. I pitched this on Twitter. Don't know, I don't know if anything's come of it yet, but not that I have that power, but you know, I tagged the two people together and just was like, I want to see. I want to see. I want to see. Universe. Give this to me. Um, I said that I want to see. Marius Bergara illustrates something written by, by Neil Gaiman because I think they both deserve that much fun. Yes. Right? Yeah. Like the stuff that Bergara, uh, Marius is doing with um, Cy Spurrier is absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and they also work together on a, uh, a Sandman one of the one of the issues for Sandman, I think John Constantine as well, and so like they're like pushing their faces up against the the veil of the of those worlds colliding, and I just I just want to see something where like those two creative minds are just like thrown into a blender. I think the world deserves that much, and they both deserve it. Yeah, I agree. 
Do you reckon Lady says the only thing wrong with Neil Gaiman's masterclass is that he couldn't do a duet with Terry Pratchett? Oh, yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah. I'd love that so much. They should do one where they where they let multiple people run a class and those guys do one together. For Nax says surprised it was fake Neil doing the signing while the real one was watching you guys watching his double. There was just like another cafe, a floor up overlooking the cafe we were looking down <laughs> on him from. The super cafe <laughs> where they make the real coffee. Yeah. <laughs> At least we got good omens. Yeah, that's true. Good omens is good. Did good omens is good. Did we keep my copy of Good Omens? Yeah. Good. I'm pretty sure we did. Okay, good. Because it's like a really early copy I found in the charity shop, and in on the back sleeve, as a picture of Neil and Terry in a graveyard together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they both look like um, both really good, quite young. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that when we were clearing out which books we'd read and didn't need anymore, you were like, keep this one, so. Oh, he signed, he signed your copy of The Thief in Time. Nice. Thief of Time. Where sorry. did the, the island go? You told me to fix it. I did. <laughs> did you delete it? <laughs> no. I turned it off. Okay. Well, I mean, I suppose that's a fast fix. Smooth sailing now. <laughs> oh, wow. Whoa, MCP95, thank you so much for the bits. Oh, you get them on my face. Yeah. Choo -choo. Wahoo. Oh, man, you got so many already, dog. Yeah. <laughs> now I just need to spin to collect more. <laughs> He's like some kind of bit of black hole oh did you guys hear the black hole <laughs> did you guys hear that nasa has recorded the sound of a black hole and then boosted it so that our tiny human ears can register it yeah like you can't normally hear things in space because of the vacuum but they've uh, they've captured sound for a black hole it reminds me of the quote from like the first season of Doctor Who after it got rebooted and he turns to Rose and he's just like I can hear the earth turning and you're like what it's like doctor like we got to hear something that only um, the doctor would be able to hear but it felt like that for me wait Spyro says they didn't record a black hole they turned image data into sound I thought they they recorded it hold on let me just read the article because then I can link it to you guys as well Oh. But it's it's super cool. I guess it makes a lot of sense when you when you think about it that they would need to use visuals to. Yeah. Hold on, let me read it. Um. Let's see, NASA made this very apparent Sunday, showing what the agency described as a sound of a black hole available to human ears in listenable format. If you're wondering how the hell does sound travel in the vacuum of space, NASA has an explanation. The misconception that there is no sound in space originates because most space is a vacuum, providing no way for sound waves to travel. A galaxy cluster has so much gas that we've picked up actual sound. Here it's amplified and mixed with other data to hear a black hole. So it doesn't sound like it's just an image. That. Maybe the mix with other data is adding that visual yeah. stuff to it. A galaxy cluster has so much gas that we picked up actual sound, is what they said. And then they link the... Uh, then they link it. The galaxy cluster you're hearing is Perseus. Uh, the data comes from NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. And the recording was released back in May for NASA's Black Hole Week. Uh, as NASA explained it back then, astronomers discovered that pressure waves sent out by the black hole cause ripples in the cluster's hot gas that could be translated into a note, one that humans cannot hear some 57 octaves below middle C. 57 octaves. Yeah. I, hold on, let me... Um, it's actually a tweet, I can just link you guys to the tweet. That would be... Here you are. Take this! What if black holes were like whales that sang to one another? Listen to this, it's cool. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, unless unless it fills you with dread, in which case don't listen to it. But if you're curious, it's very cool. I liked it. What if John Carpenter mixed a sound of a black hole into his own music? It's beautiful and kind of haunting. <laughs> Pilkey says sound is just waves through matter, so the gas actually has sound going through it, but they need to use light to record the sound in said gas. It's how we can also record the sound of a sun, despite there being a vacuum between us. I want to hear what the sun sounds like now. It's, it sounds like um, <laughs> 90s era pop music. Can you feel the sunshine? <laughs> it's raining on your face. Scribblin says NASA captures the sounds of a black hole violently farting with the force of a million engines. I like stories that are centered around the um, time difference in proximity to a, uh, a black hole. Mm -hmm. I think those are really rad sci-fi stories. They're, I've seen it done... Um, in Doctor Who and I've seen it done in Stargate and both were really one of my favorite both my favorite episodes yeah like basically in, in Stargate the portal opens onto a black hole and so um, I think I can't remember what what is it like things closer to the black holes time moves faster I think that's what it is and um so the room just outside of the Stargate, time is moving faster than the, the corridors outside of it and then farther and farther and farther outside. So like there's people on the outside trying to help them, but like days are passing and stuff. I think it's just really, it's like you got to help them now before they age out and die. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. And there's an, and the one um, the, the construct for the Doctor Who episode is that there's a ship that's like got lots and lots of floors, and the sh the floor closest to the black hole is developing faster than the top part of the ship. Yeah. Planet Chaos says, "Imagine hearing this as you're too close to a black hole. That'd be terrifying. Can you imagine that? Being in a spaceship and like." going by a black hole in the distance and just hearing like this oh oh it's so cool wait the stargate episode is great time moves slower when it's closer to a black hole no oh, no really no it's faster surely i don't know It's slower. Oh. Okay, cool. It is slower. Then wait. Then wait. See, Shadow Ziggy. Higher gravity, slower time. It's slower for the people near the black hole. I gotta rewatch those. Make sense of it. Time moves slower closer to the ground. Okay, so the people close to it, time is moving way slower. So it gives people it gave the people outside time to try and figure out how to help them. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So it's like to the people they're like they've been trying to do something for five minutes and then outside it's like it's been five months, we haven't fixed it yet. Hold tight or something. Okay, sorry. I'm You don't have to apologize, it's okay, sorry, dabs. <laughs> <laughs> Bow. Um, what are you? What are you doing on stream today? Well, I could do some animation for Girl in the Glim. Yeah. I let me go open up. I could indeed. Is there a time you need to to head off today? Uh, let me check. Let me check. Black Chaos says, "I heard if you fell in a black hole, you'd see the universe outside Whoa! speed up more and more, Whoa! and you could see the universe's entire lifespan." Wow. There should be a comic, there probably is a comic, about someone who falls into a black hole and watches the death and rebirth of the universe. They have to wait until technology advances enough for someone to come and rescue them, but it takes like several, several cycles for that to happen. And so they're like fundamentally changed.
Jay Play said Rad to Christ did an animatic recently that kind of deals with that. Oh yeah, do you want to link it if you can find it? Um, I'm good. I can go a little bit over ten. I don't have a meeting today, so. Ayanoki says, "Hey, I just watched Everything Everywhere. So when you've got Infinity on your side, you'll be fine." I love that movie. I, That's such a hopeful movie. I kind of want to watch that again. Yeah, me too. Um, when it's not on a plane and we don't have the <laughs> sound behind it, just to hear the sound design of it more. Yeah. Sorry, I have been missing the crow mills, Ben. Let me let me check them out. Oh yes, so I got this one. Let's see, uh, yeah, the further away from a gravitational field, the faster time runs. Also, the faster you move, the slower time goes. This is why G the faster you move, the slower time goes, really. This is why GPS satellites need to account for the time going faster for being in space, but going slower for moving so fast. What the heck? That's so complicated. That's so much maths. Vanak says, does that mean that sound can escape a black hole? That doesn't sound right. I thought that I ate everything. I'm, yeah. I'm unsure. I think we're unsure about a lot of stuff to do with black holes because we can't get close enough to really study them. Indy and I are definitely <laughs> unsure about black holes because we haven't gotten close enough to study one. Mm -hmm. I don't know what science knows. Indy woke up. She was in the middle of a long set of stairs at the top Peering down at her was Boris Johnson. Oh no! Oh. As he took his first step, he tripped. This isn't so bad. And started to fall down the stairs. He tumbled faster, faster towards India. No! India started to run, but the Boris boulder was catching up to her. She couldn't outrun. She turned and looked behind her. This is what she saw. Oh my gosh, there's an image attached. There's an Im What? Yeet. What? No, I want you to see it. Boris Johnson has no place on this stream. <laughs> did, did you did you put Boris Johnson falling down some stairs into an AI generator? <laughs> it's amazing you can still tell it's him. That middle right one is very good. <laughs> These are amazing. You see, this is AI being used for like the best purpose. I I approve of this. Oh my gosh. I gotta run, slide under a door, and then grab my hat. Do you want that ability? To to slide under a door and grab my hat. Just to slide, really. I can do that already. Not on your butt. Yes I can. Yeah, no, I mean I mean do the whole like you're down on your side, you've got one arm behind, behind you, you got your feet up and stuff. Oh, you're asking like in terms of the game rather than real life? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I don't think I need to. Anyway. Yeah, I got I got the um painting file up, so Oh, okay. One sec then let me get my stuff up. Unless you want to just take the screen for a sec while I, uh, while I saw it out. Uh, no, it's okay. No, go on. Go on. No, it's okay. Go on. No. Go on. No. Go on. Oh, no. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on with you. Pop it over to you and I will get my stuff ready. I've done a lot of weird stuff with, like, unplugging everything so i'm gonna check that it's still showing the correct screen yes double check first um so studio mode what's really weird is you still you see what i do on studio mode so if i click here you get a black screen but that's not what they see uh-huh um screens sources, uh -huh. uh, Dog screen properties. Okay, no, it's sh it's showing the right one. That's that's good. Okay, and what about cool. me? Um. And what about me? What about Tumbido? What about Tumbido? Uh, yours shows uh Tomb Boom. Yes. Does it show Glim on Tomb Boom though? Yes. Because that's important. Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Wood. Yeah. Okay. 
Cool. So if I hit these two buttons, then it's all good. It's all good, but they don't see it. So I need to. Go, I can't see anything. Go what back about to Tomb Boom? <laughs> what about Monster? Controls. That's so good. Sources. Uh, controls. Studio mode. Yeah. <laughs> Dragon Lady. You <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad that you like our. Just, just as chatting about stuff. I often worry about um, the fact that the last couple of weeks we kind of haven't done that much art. <laughs> We've mostly been chatting. Oops, all chat. Yeah. So this was the um, this was the parallaxing background. Um, for one of the scenes in the Glim trailer, and I just want to like make it cool. India, what else did you think would be in this environment here that I can put in other than the, the kind of big tent? It's it's tricky because that's one of the environments I haven't really designed as yeah. much. Um, but I think you need you need some speakers and stuff in there, and you need more than one tent. More than one tent, okay. Cool. Yeah, and if you could make the tent feel big. Oh, okay, I get you. Make that'd the, be great. Make the door smaller. Than, than Still roughing stuff out, so. How do we have our stuff set up? Yeah, this is two PCs. We're both plugged into the internet, so we're both plugged in via Ethernet. And then Mike streams everything from his side. So my microphone and controller is plugged into Mike's computer. And I send him my screen via NDI. And that's that's the way that we work. Probably the NDI part is the part that you're asking about. But it lets India control what she's showing you and like um, that sort of stuff. It's done over um, a wired connection or a local area network mostly. Although they maybe fit, have that NDI for more now, I'm not sure. I only know what I know because I ask questions to lead me to discovering the information that I hope to need to know to do the things I wanted to do. Google foo. Can you tell the music a little bit, Mike, so I can hear it? You're so quiet. It gets picked up on the microphones is why. Because I removed a lot of the stuff suppressing the microphone so that we could talk. Living with Doug is sometimes like living with an old man. Old like, man put the, the volume up Can you turn the music louder. up? And he's like, tweaks it by half a decimal and you're like, thanks. That's not what old people do. They turn it up really loud. My dad said that his hearing loss is, he found out from the doctor that it's hereditary. Are you prepared to live with someone who's going to go deaf over time? No. Cool. We'll get you a hearing aid yeah. if that ever happens and we'll learn sign language. That'd be cool. Yeah. And then we won't have to like yell or anything. Yeah. It's, it's taken me years to kind of problem solve and figure out that like, our family could have learned sign language to help my dad like communicate with us. I, I, and I brought this up to him and I was like, hey dad, I have this idea. And he's like, nah, I don't want to learn that. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's his choice at the end of the day. If he doesn't fancy learning it, then he doesn't have to. Swoodle says, can confirm old men turn up the sound till the room shakes. Maximum bass. Those, those partying old dudes with their loud music. With their popular music.
to the do what it do. That part makes me think of that. I don't know what that is. The oh, 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 I can't remember the lyrics. It's just something to tell. Something. What I, song is it? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Maybe someone in chat will know. Bert says, I used to talk to a deaf friend by writing texts on our phones and showing each other. That's sweet. <laughs> Fake Shift Al says, maybe you can get a dog one of those trumpets you can hold up to your ear. <laughs> yes. I think I'm getting like, you're ringing in my ears over the last kind of year or so, by the way. Hmm. Don't be like, you, it's just in your head because it's not. I'm not. I'm not saying it's just in your head. Okay. I just I just know that you, you tend to... Uh... No, this is real. Like, I'm hearing ringing. Okay. But, yeah. You know, have you thought of maybe going and getting checked up at the doctor's? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should do that then. Welcome to the tinnitus club. Yeah, yeah. To no! To no! But yeah, um, I, I wish that they just taught sign language at school for, to everybody. Sorry, do you it sounded like you were about to say something. Um, I recently, like, you know how my headphones would be giving me a little bit of bother because the the wired cable just doesn't work anymore. Um, oh so, yeah, as of yesterday. So I, they're, they're noise cancelling headphones. Um, I just haven't been using the noise cancelling for a long time, but with the Bluetooth connection, you have to switch them on, uh, and that came on by default, and it was never more apparent the ringing in my ears when it was like, I'm going to remove all the sound from outside, and it's just like, eee. I'm like, oh, there it is. Yeah. Dr. Fruitbat says, I started learning sign language recently. It's really fun. That's awesome. Oh, we should do that, Doig. Just a little bit every day. What sign language are you going to learn, British or American? I mean, I feel like British would be easiest for us to learn, but if American is the most widely used, then it makes sense to learn the most widely used version. I think. Yeah. I don't, I don't really know. Isn't the one called Universal Sign Language, or is that like a lie? There are there are so many different types of sign language, dude. Yeah. Like, um, different areas, different one. It's it's like having an accent almost, or like like there's there's a ton of varieties. There's not just two. Mhm. Mm Fanatic says, I heard the argument that sign language is ableist against people without arms. Well, that's not, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. Like, yes, people who don't it's have... just unfortunate. Yeah, people who don't have arms won't be able to use it, which sucks, but it's still enabling people who wouldn't normally be able to communicate to communicate. Um, you just have to find a different way to do it for people without arms. That's like perfume companies being ableist against people without a sense of smell. It's just like, it's just unfortunate. Yeah, well you need to, obviously like, we need more modes of communication um, so that everyone can find a way to communicate like easily with one another. But sign language is a good one, I think. Silky says universal sign language is where everyone knows what sticking up a middle finger at them means. Jedi Superpunk says ASL is based on the French sign language, so you can know, know a bit of French that way. Okay. Ayanoki says as a person with missing fingers, video game controllers has been an adventure. I guess sign language would be difficult for you as well then, Ayanoki. God, it's tough, isn't it? Like, it's tough that everything is designed with, like, exactly one type of person in mind. <laughs> and if you deviate from that even a little bit, it's like, welcome to the new challenge of just doing everyday things. But them not having been designed for you. 
What's your favorite game controller to use, Ayanoki? I know, he said I'm just missing my left thumb. I'd probably speak sign language with a lisp. <laughs> Imagine if that's the way it worked. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I wonder what portion of the vocabulary would be locked off for you or whether there would be like... Hopefully you could find a, a way. Yeah. That like... Yeah. Yeah, Pilkey says accessibility is important. Make it core to your design. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's taken me an embarrassing long time, but I've finally started thinking with colorblind people in mind for everything I make. So now whenever I paint anything or design anything, um, you can you can download these filters where you can see how colorblind people would see your image. I should do that. Yeah. I so for all the pitch stuff I've more. been doing with, uh, with my pal, you know who. Yeah. Um, I've been like checking them through filters to make sure that they'd still be visible if someone were to view the images with color blindness. Send me that because I should, I should, as a, as a colorist and color designer, I should absolutely have that knowledge. Yeah. I mean, I say filters. What I actually do is there's a, there's a website that lets you see an image differently. You just have to like paste it in, yeah. but I can send you the image I use. It's like a plugin you get for uh, for your browser. Wait, Photoshop has it natively? Have I been doing it for a browser when I could have been doing it natively through Photoshop this whole time? Sarah showed me her belly, so I've got to, I've got to scratch it. I think it's really cute that they um, If one of them purrs or is making some noise, the other cat will come and find out what's up. And sometimes um, we'll think they're trying to get our attention. They'll come in and they'll just be like, Meow. and we're like, hey, what's up? And then they're, they're generally just ignoring us and looking for the other. It's true. Um, In Photoshop, go to view and then proof setup. Okay, I'll check that out. So I've we been bought, doing it the long way around the whole time. We bought a whole bunch of cat beds for the for them yesterday. Oh my gosh, we went on a spending spree yesterday, guys. We went on a spending spree. We spent... We spent a hundred pounds on cat toys and cat beds. We haven't spent a lot on them recently. Like we got the initial setup and toys, but they haven't got anything new for a while. So. Yeah. And we just like, we were, we were like, just feeling the fact that we wanted to get them something nice. So I was, uh, India went to go, um, I think get a cup of tea or something. And as she was walking by, Kuma loves being a doorstop now so you'll often find kuma just resting his butt against the door um he just likes propping the doors open and uh she bent down to give him a pet and she's wearing her like house coat or like nightgown and it created a nice little space for him that he just scuttled into and just lay down and started purring um but he was effectively like on top of the fabric now. So it, it, I couldn't move, I so, was trapped. So and it was like, Mike, I'm trapped. And I was like, uh oh, and then you went and go see. She's like, where's the Kuma? And he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> like in here. And I started like jostling him and stroking him from, from the outside. And he just purred all the harder. And I was like, this boy likes to hide. He Let's loves get, he loves crawling underneath carpets and stuff. Uh, so, we got him like a blanket and also a couple of cat beds that you can like, I think they were like cat sleeping bags. Yeah. Um, for him to burrow into so that he has nice places to go. Cause at the moment he's just on the floor next to the door behind me. Just 
know, Sometimes like, I like just lying on the floor. Yeah, but yeah. I think it's been super warm for them. Um, Don't attack my feet now. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> we got worried because Kuma, like, we know something's up with Kuma if he's not as parry as usual. And um, we've been harness training the cats uh, in preparation for taking them outside. Uh, and now we're at the point where we're taking them outside. Um, oh my gosh. Yes. We have to tell you what happened last time we took them outside. Um, but Kuma freaked out a little bit. He was he was like shaking. He wasn't wasn't enjoying himself that much. And um, he slowly, you know, got used to it. And I was petting him and just being like, it's okay, dude. It's all right. And we were just outside our house. Um, but when he came back, his power was gone a little bit. And I think he was slowly getting it back. Meow. Yeah. Because he's really easy. He, like, usually is super easy to just start purring. Yeah. I don't know if the solution is to take him out more often uh, so that he gets used to it and also realizes that every time he goes out, he's going to get to come back afterwards and we're going to be there the whole time. There's, like, nothing scary about it. But, yeah. What? Last time we took them out, oh, my gosh. There was this moment. And uh, I was I was on my period at the time. And I was like, okay, I just need to go and sit down for a sec because I've been like running around with Sparrow uh, in this harness and like my tummy's hurt and so I'm just going to sit down with Sparrow and she was like, no, I have zero chill. I'm going to run around. So Mike was like, well, why don't you take Kuma for a little bit and I'll take Sparrow. So we swapped and, uh, and I took Kuma. Kuma, let, let, like, let's <laughs> set the scene for you. Kuma for the last half hour has has been sitting still or lying down lying down or moving a couple paces and then lying down and then been in the same spot for like five ten minutes the entire india's been all over the place down behind rocks uh like in bushes just around the building around cars this whole time and kum has just been like no i'm good here so i was like he's not he's not really moving so here you do you take him and i'll i'll give you a rest and like take spiral around and like 20 seconds in or something then i sit down and kuma immediately decides that now is time for him to like go bonkers and try and jump the highest he's ever jumped so kuma starts just like jumping around i think he saw a fly and i'm like oh so i like get up and i'm like moving around with kuma to make sure it like that I'm not holding him back from jumping and stuff. But because India basically had to like run, she basically ran toward him, which made him run even more. And Sparrow, who I was holding, got got frightened by the sudden movement from India and, and I moved. And so Sparrow basically pulled on her harness away from me backwards and just just went out of the entire harness just just head popped right out just fucking houdinied it what i hear is just like i'm like oh and get pulled after kuma and then i hear mike yell and i turn around just to see him with an empty harness and disappearing around a corner <laughs> because that's where sparrow went and i'm like oh shit and like in my head i'm like do i run after her I run after him and then the part of my head's like I feel like if I run after them I'm just gonna number one what am I gonna do with Kuma number two I feel like I'm gonna scare her off if I run after her so I'm like what should I do what should I do okay I'm just gonna sit I'm gonna sit with Kuma I'm gonna trust that Doig's gonna get this done and I'm gonna be here in case she like comes this way so I see Doig disappear around the side of the building after her and then like 10 seconds later, she appears around the side of the building running away from him. Yeah. <laughs> and he's running behind her trying to catch her. Basically, and she's running towards me. She went around the corner and she sort of like turned, looked at me and I kind of like tried to calmly like walk up to her and be like, hey, you, how are you doing? It's okay. And then she was like, bolt. 
he was like, no, you're not getting me again. Um, basically went back around the corner and then ran straight to Swifty, but was running with but, the intent yeah, to go past she you. She was running towards me, but I could see that she was aiming for the gap between me and the wall to like slip by me and run past me. And I, I basically like football tackled her um, with my hands on the way past and managed to grab her and grapple her. Thank goodness. Could have been really bad. Uh, but luckily we caught her. Jeez though, scary stuff. I guess the harness is still like a little bit big around her neck. Yeah. Yeah, just a little. She's a small cat. Yeah, we, we were scared by it, but also just super relieved that we'd managed to catch her pretty fast and it was like nothing had happened. I'm so happy she decided she was going to run straight like around the corner and stuff rather than down to the fence and through the fence onto the road. Did you mean football or American gridiron hand egg? What's an American gridiron hand egg? <laughs> Did you throw it through the hoop? <laughs> Essentially, I just like grabbed her on the way past. Um, but it was very much like I get one shot of this. I got to like, I got to not fumble this because if I do, she's going past me. So it felt like a big moment. Don't know why the camera is being a butt face and not giving me like. Oh, you got the got the kittens on cam. Yeah, they play in. Oh, his little face poked around and the camera went black. Sorry. There we go. Can you turn it a little bit? <laughs> Look at this, look at this terrible frame with like the, the like little white border inside. What are you talking about? It's just like, oh, hello. Hello. Hey, Spyro. How's it going? This is a, this is the escapee. This is Spyro. Here we are. Okay. To, back to here. Hello, little Vegeta. She Vegeta. is, right? Yeah. Look at her little tail going. Little Saiyan tail. It is funny, like, how in media and everything like that, there's kind of like, there's two archetypes um, that are like fairly prominent. And yeah, of the, of the traits that you can think of and stuff. I, Vegeta and Goku, Kuma and Sparrow, well, Sparrow and Kuma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kumara and Spar Sparrow Jeter. Sparrow Jeter. Um, Sparrow is a very strange cat. She's not skittish. She's just always in like, um, like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta work hard to like pet her until, until. You don't, and she's like, I'm gonna bite you, pet me. Pet me! They're, they're both kind of skittish in their own ways. Yeah, but I feel like Kuma's less, less so. He's like, he gets super scared whenever he's in a new situation. Yeah. And she's braver. Well, she gets more easily spooked by sounds. She gets so spooked once. Uh, not once, like, she got so spooked about just unrelated things as cats do oh yeah she she's like 
the one who gets sometimes scared of towels and stuff. She's like, this has suddenly become a creature that I'm now afraid of. We have um, a sloped uh, ceiling uh, in our bedroom and uh, India has a bunch of like um, build it yourself unit spaces like little cubes you know and when you go to like tabling and stuff people have these kind of cubes for displaying stuff and she keeps a bunch of equipment music stuff in there and basically there's a stepped way up to um, this is important for the setting there's a stepped way up to the slope um, and so there's a little wedge shape there and India's got a bunch of plushes and stuff on there but Spyro had decided that she was going to go up there and I had one of those wand toys with the like the fabric thing that you can kind of trail around to play with the cat so I go fishing um, thinking like I can get her down off of the unit and away from the plushes and away from whatever ill intent she had yeah we can always distract them with play so I do that, and I like, I, I whip the wand so that it lands close to her, and Sparrow basically hears the noise of it hitting next to her, freaks out, jumps, and hits the, hits the ceiling above her, lands down, and is just like, what was that? What was that? What was her, it? Her whole tail. Sparrow's tail is usually, like, really long. And, and slender, but as soon as Sparrow is spooked, it bushes up and the whole thing, like, just, just like, um, and she's just like, what the hell was that? And I'm like, hey, it's a, it's a toy. You know the toy. She's just like, no, I must investigate what made that noise. And I'm still shaking this thing. And she's like, like sleuthing, like, what, whatever could that have been? <laughs> oh, man. Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All of the two of them, though, I feel like Sparrow has the brain cell. Yeah, frequently she does, yeah. Like, she can she can work out usually what's going on. Yeah. Like, I remember our friend Jenny and her cat. Like, she can tap a place and the cat will come over sit there and then she'll give the cat a treat and uh i was like that's pretty neat so I, I i i saw if i could do it with sparrow and sparrow got it like that like instantly just i, I tapped where i wanted her to go and she jumped up there and was like yes and i was just like holy shit i just i trained her in like two or three attempts all all in thing of just like I walk you over a place, I tap, she ran over, she went up, and then she's just like, hey, cool. Tried that with Kuma. I'm still trying that with Kuma. <laughs> I'm st still, still trying to figure out how <laughs> to make Kuma realize that he should jump while we tap. <laughs> yeah. But he's just like, but why can't I have the treat though? And you're like, come up here, Kuma. And he's like, it's in your hand, give. <laughs> And you're like, come up here and I'll give it to you. And he's like, but why not give me treat now? And it's like, Kuma, please. He just like, just, he just lies down. He just, he's just looks like... at you, <laughs> looks at you with these giant eyes, these giant sad eyes. And you're like, oh, come on, little buddy. Don't do this to me, my heart. Meanwhile, Sparrow's like launching herself across the room to get to where you're trying to do yeah, the Yeah, meanwhile, you're Kuma. trying to like train Kuma and Sparrow's like, I'm here. <laughs> I did it. I did it. Oh, he is such a soft, I, I think we've been talking about our cats for like 20 minutes. Sorry point, guys. But like, he's such a soft boy. Um, we need them on camera more. Yeah, we do. We do. He's such a soft boy though. Like, I've never in my life, and you guys can correct me if I'm, like, if you've also experienced this, but I've never in my life met a cat that you can pet the belly of while they're in play mode. Like, you can, you can, like, 
be messing around with a toy and like waving a wand he's like got it and he's biting it whatever and you can just full on just rub his belly and fuss him while he's he's doing that I've never seen a cat like that he's he's never scratched me on purpose ever um like there's been times where you know he's <laughs> he's trying to climb up me at one point when they were like kittens and stuff but he's never got pissed he's like very even tempered so the vets love him we took we took the two cats in and like um when they got the surgery and stuff they're just like he's lovely though he let us do whatever we wanted with him her on the other hand yeah she's like don't <laughs> touch me how dare you their temperaments are so so different basically kuma was just like yeah all right let's go and K spiral was like i'm gonna tear out anything you try and stick in me and run i think the other vet when she was getting her shots he was like wow she's a spitfire because when he like and put the needle in the back of her neck she basically like turned she whipped to, like, around super fast so fast that he like let go of her and was just like it's he got okay. scared she scared this little kitten scared him this little kitten got him like super fast she didn't bite him she didn't even try she was just like what the no. hell is happening yeah she she looked at him extremely reproachfully I have a million cat stories to reply with, but there's no time. <laughs> oh, you're right. We're over 10, 10, 10 o'clock. I think I need to make this doorway even smaller. I love them. I love having cats. I love. I absolutely adore I them. I knew you'd make a great cat, Dad. Yeah? Did you, did you? Yeah. It didn't take much pushing yesterday to be like, do you want to get them some stuff for the cats? <laughs> I, I love that. I was like... I was just happy to embrace it. I was yeah. like, yes, yes. Just tell me what you want, Doig, and we'll we'll get it. Follow your heart. We need an animal morning session that's only just cats. Yeah, we need one where it's just a camera on the cats the whole time. If we can get them to like be here, then that would be good. That would be good. But they are they don't often in the mornings chill out that much anymore no they used to chill out way more they used to come in uh, and lie by us when they were kittens I think when they slept more Percy turned three yesterday oh awesome. happy birthday Percy you three 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 and how is Percy doing? I want to know if anyone else has had a cat that like you can just pet them while they're in play mode. I'm then... sure other people must have. There must, there must be a thing. Um, but this is also my first time where a cat's like, I know this is your hand and not a play thing and I'm not gonna... You are so lucky because of that. <laughs> because you do just like to fuss him with your hand and I'm pretty sure Kurzik at the time was just like, don't do that though and I... I was like, yeah, I'm not going to teach them that my hand is um, a toy, but now I just go in and mess with them anyway. Yeah, now I've taught them that any part of my body is fair game for them to attack. Spyro does bite feet. Kuma not so much. Would you say Spyro's impatient as well? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, yo, it's go time. Yeah. She is. Have you ever tried to ignore her when she wants fusses? Uh, yeah. She's like, well, not, she's no, not well, having I've it. I've been working and she's been like, let's go. And I usually, I usually I relent. Spiral's is the kind where it's like, hey, pet me, but not here, not where you are. Across the room under this thing. Let's go. Come on. I'll let's show you. Let's go. But yeah, usually in the mornings, uh, quite early, Spyro's like, I've woken up and I need, I need you to pet me. And it's so... Every morning. Uh, yeah. 
It's so adorable. Because she's just like, she doesn't... She's not calm about it at all. She's like, okay, something within me has compelled me to come over to you. And I'm just going to fall on you over and over. And then you pet her and she gets up and she falls over again. Or you pet her somewhere else and she rolls and somersaults over. Or she just starts licking you, like, intensely. Just like, yep. I love you. Pet me! And then she does a thing where she does a little soft bite now. Just a little bit. I'm still trying to work out if that's affection or if she's actually like, is this person dead? I'm going to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's I'm going to eat them. If I died in in my bed and just like Sparrow that was it i Sparrow feel like Sparrow would come over in the morning and just eat me just eat my hands off a certain dominance says ben i've heard grooming can do that too she's being a girl boss <laughs> she's fucking cute about it though but that one like said they'd eat you <laughs> also says a little bit of both yeah. Ba -ra -ba -ba -ba. It's just something the way she does it that feels like a predator, like a hyena or something, <laughs> picking at carrion, you know? No, <laughs> no. No, no. Um. <laughs> I think Sparrow's planning a downfall, dude. Yeah, probably. Like a tiger hologram. Like <laughs> Kum Kuma, meanwhile, is just hiding in wait um, underneath carpets. Or the, the, the runner in the... Um, corridor or yeah. the hall. Yeah, Kuma likes to burrow his way underneath carpets and then just sit there as a lump. And then you just have to be aware when you go out into the hall that if there's like a lump under the carpet, not to step on it. I basically don't stand on the, 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 the that, that carpet, which is supposed, is designed to prevent <laughs> us from wearing out the hall carpet. Yeah, it's meant to be like a nice hall runner, just to like look nice and be nice to walk on and it's we can't use it because there might be a cat underneath it. We should un un unbump it. But then it makes it harder for him to get under there and No, we should unbump it. We should. He'll just bump it again, so Yeah. Just to make sure he's not there. There's points where like the bump is too small to be him. And I step on it. And then I just have, I'm filled with like, but what if though? What if? Um, that, that, that kind of like tension and release of like, <gasps> but what if he was under there though? I have a great picture of him under there. You do? Well, yeah, I sent it to you. <laughs> oh days yeah. Back, if you wanted to share it. Oh yeah. Hang on. Aurora says, what are you working on today? Um, I'm working on the trailer for my, for my graphic novel. Uh, I've been... It's been like on the back burner for like the last month because a lot of stuff has been happening, but I'm starting to get back into doing it uh, this week. So hopefully we'll be able to get it done sometime soon. This is one of the last scenes we need to animate. Just paste it into Photoshop, I guess. <laughs> so this is just what you see on a daily basis yeah. in our house. So this is Kuma, and he's lying on his front here. Is it his front? Yeah. <laughs> so th that's what you're seeing, like his back. So this is just what you see when you're walking down the hall and you're like, oh, I wonder where Kuma could be. And then alternatively, uh, 
You've also sent me a picture of Sparrow. I did, yeah, because Sparrow was on top of the wardrobe. And there's a way that you can see that Sparrow's on top of the wardrobe too. But she's very dignified. <laughs> so here is how you can tell that Sparrow's on top of the wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> I love the little little bean toes. Bean toe boxes. <sighs> She's great. Yeah. So that's that's what we generally see of them. There used to be so many plushes up here and they've just all been thrown yeah. off. They're all down the back now or on the floor. Like we put, the, we put the, the wardrobe up and I was like, this is a good place to store all the plushes. So we put all the plushes on top of it and they've just knocked them all down or behind. How do you feel about the fact that all of your best laid plans for how to make, uh, how to like adorn our apartment, all of them have basically been undone? Yeah. Um, I mean, not great, but it's worth it. You know? I'll find new ways. We just have to find new ways to coexist. I think you're pretty safe if we get the pictures up and framed. Hmm. Okay. I hope so. They're not ragdoll cats, are they? I hope not. No, they're not. They're black go, and white. Let me see if we can go find one of them. Gone to grab Kuma, I think. Oh, Ansa says, "Do you want a monster hunt later?" I would love to, Ansa. Yeah, if you if you if you're up for it, I'd love to do that. You want to say about uh, lunchtime our time? Awesome! Yay! Yeah. Found one of them. Lured them in with the mouse. Which one did you find? Sparrow. As well, but I guess not. <laughs> They're getting so big now, though. Yeah, they are. Spyro has been lured in with murder. Yes, yes, you, you, you got it. I'm gonna have to find a better in between for that for that body. I was being lazy, and you can tell. Oh, there's Gula. He's on the chair. He's on the chair. Oh, little man. Okay. Okay, yes, yeah, so I need another frame here, I think. 
This cat is wild, yeah. Uh, Sparrow is extremely like she's, she's the murder one. She just wants to destroy everything. Oh, hey, hey, that's Kuma. Hey, little man. You get to see some Kuma, but. There he is. Yeah! <laughs> Just looking at you. Yeah. It's gonna be okay. Yeah. You're going big, huh? Yeah, the pink noses and beans. They're growing up so much. Look how long our arm is now. Lorg. They're the absolute best. Yeah, they are. I look how I love how casual Sparrow looks, just leaning on one arm. He's just like peering at me from behind here. Hey there, little man. How deep are our desks? I've got a corner desk, so... Yeah, Doik has a corner desk. It's pretty deep. He got it specifically so that cast could sit on it. Yeah. I need to find a good spot that can kind of show you where they are. Yeah, you need to get a little shelf that you can mount a camera on. Yeah. Kimmy says, I learned this past weekend when visiting my fam that I am 100% a cat person. My mom impulsively got a puppy recently and oof, she didn't do any research whatsoever on owning a dog. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. man. I think I, yeah. from what I've heard, they're very high maintenance, right? Because like they really do like love and crave the affection almost all the time. And then like they absolutely need walks to be healthy every day. They're just very high energy, and cats are too sometimes. But they also have long periods of just being like, I'm just gonna sleep. Which is really helpful for artists, I feel. Because, you know, when we're super busy, a lot of the time they're just napping. Yeah. I tend to take like 10 to 15 minute breaks from work. Yeah. To go and play with them. They're helpful in that regard, right? Yeah. Because yeah, it's I, like I want to keep bonded with them, and I I learned that like you can establish like really good kind of friendships with the cats through play. Yeah, they kind of encourage you to take a break. Um, Martina says I want a dog, but I can't take care of it, so I'm not getting a dog. That sounds super responsible. My mum um, got a dog recently. Maybe just. Sorry, go ahead, Mike. And there was points where she came to visit me, um, and I was like, oh, hey, have you done this before? Like, taking the dog to a park, or taking them off a leash, and she was like, nope. And I was like, ah, uh, and suddenly, like, very aware of, like, so this is your, you're just going for, this is your first time doing this experience. She's like, yep. She's like, oh, right, wrong. I guess you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. But, like, Dog was in new environment, never been there before. Yeah. So I was like, uh, Dog is in park with other dogs. Um, basically, her dog, 
Try to body pile uh, another dog, a smaller dog. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Kimmy says, Kimmy says my parents will be going back to school. My siblings will be going back to school, not your parents. My siblings will be going back to school. And then my parents will both be working. Poor puppy. Aw. Yeah, poor puppers. I think um, a lot of people end up getting pets during the, the pandemic because we all got stuck working from home. It made sense to like have a companion to keep you company. But yeah, if you if you have to go away every day I think it can be hard for pets who aren't used to being solitary which is where I think like cats are great because a lot of the time they kind of want they want to be solitary sometimes to be left alone yeah maybe um I mean this probably just doubles the problem getting like another pet but it'd be nice if the puppa had something to keep them company. Yeah, I think they're so social. <laughs> Sorry about all the crashing and stuff. The cats are in play mode now. I did this. Space Pirate Ephemera says, we had huskies when I was growing up. Super loving, very smart, very high maintenance. Fostering, um, says Kimmy, is a great opportunity to see what it's like looking after a dog too and not permanent. Yeah. Yeah, I have a, a friend who fosters cats, which is super cute and super cool. And um, they are a much better person than I am because I would become too attached to the cats and not be able to let them go. What age do you foster them until? Usually? Very young, I think. Oh, so it's like more like... Kind of like... It's raising them until they're about the age that we got like Kuman Sparrow at. Yes, but I think also sometimes people take in older cats because it's all about getting them ready to be adopted. Yeah. If um if they're not in a situation where they're going to be able to do that on their own. Gotcha. So like some older cats I think like if they've lost their home but they need a place to stay until they're adopted or they need to like be re-socialized or something. Yeah, okay. I'm really happy that we got Spar and Kuma in a pair um, because when Doig and I are busy, they can play with one another. And I think it also makes them a bit braver when things happen like they have to go to the vets because at least they're going together. And I think that gives them a little bit of confidence. Teal Tail says a lot of people here in the US bought dogs during the pandemic and then a lot of them went up for adoption after things started reopening because a lot of people weren't ready for the responsibility. And that's really sad. Like, I feel bad for the people and for the dogs. Like, I feel like if you're, if you're going to take a chance on a pet in a pandemic, then probably a dog... If, if you're not sure that you're going to have the time once the pandemic stops, a dog's probably not the thing. Yeah. Probably getting a different type of animal. Right. <laughs> Maybe like um, a bird or some fish. Nah, birds are awful. Why would you get a bird? Birds are cute. <laughs> Remember that when they just kept pushing things off of the, the, <laughs> the ledge? Yeah, I saw a video of um, just this person putting things on a ledge and the bird would just continually push them off. Like, the bird would enjoy it. You could see the glee in the bird's movements when they were pushing things off the edge. Yes. Hop, 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 hop. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to head off, India. No! It's time. Okay. That's okay. Uh, that's totally fair. I will get on with my freelance work. Exciting. Yeah. Um, we really appreciate all coming by and just uh, helping to keep us company, helping us start the day the right way. Um, whoa! What is it? Uh, BM Motive gave us a raid. Hey, dude. Hey, Thank dude. You. Thanks so much for the raid. 
Hopefully you're doing good. And I didn't I didn't even talk about my tweet thread that I put out at like 2 a.m. last night. You didn't. <laughs> Do you want to talk about it a little bit before you go? Uh, no. Maybe tomorrow. Okay. See how it goes. Um, I forgot. I forgot. I was, I was going to talk about it. Basically, I put a tweet thread out about like kind of an emotional response to the current climate of um, things just getting cancelled outright. But we can talk about that more tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um... You had fun animating. That's awesome. If you want to share what you were working on, feel free. We are. I'm. I have to go to my day job, um, very, very, very abruptly. So. Ah, <clears throat> uh, thanks. Yeah, I saw. I saw that you replied on it. Um, I think it's. I think it's an interesting. An inter- interesting thing to kind of. Think on. Monster says, I thought Doig was right. <laughs> Me I don't too, know Monster. I don't know if I'm right. I don't have a plan or solutions or anything, but just that feeling. Yeah, that like... feeling is is true. Um, I felt it in my gut. I was like, yes, I agree with this. I just wish there was some... Like, I think we all want to do it. It's just like, what's the practical solution? Yeah. That makes it doable for people. Anywho, we can talk about it tomorrow if you want. Yeah, let's talk about it more tomorrow. Land on a cliffhanger. And hopefully our mouths work tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see. Um, Good job, India. <laughs> Thanks. Animating them frames. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm doing it. All right, uh... Yeah, we're going to raid Scratch 2D. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for keeping us company. And until next time. May the rest of your day be filled with adventure. adventure. Take care, everyone, and thank you very much. Thank you, 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 thank you.